The more time we spend in nature areas, the higher the chances of us encountering some of the rare moments in nature and those will really keep you wanting to come back for more. Hi, I'm Dr. Leong Ming and I'm a naturalist and nature guide. I like to spend my time in the wild areas of Singapore, the green parks and spaces, along the coast, along the shores, in the forest. And at the same time, I like to bring people also to these natural areas and show them the plants and animals that are still calling Singapore their home. I think it started when I was young and I was very interested in the animals as well as the plants around me and I was just fascinated by the sheer diversity that can be found in such a small place. My chapter with bats started when I uh, was with the National Parks and we were looking at the diversity of wildlife in the nature areas, especially in the central nature reserve. So we put in a lot of effort to try and study both the fruit bats as well as the insect eating bats. And we set up some traps to capture them and to uh, measure them and to check on their health status. And that was an amazing journey of discovery to see how many species of bats there were. During our time researching on bats, we were able to find some species that were only very localised in certain areas in Singapore uh, within the Central Nature Reserve and uh, some were actually rediscoveries and some were new records uh, totally not documented in Singapore before. So uh, our efforts were quite uh, successful and we were able to uh, look deeper and see uh, that actually Singapore was home to more th bats than we thought of and we were able to have a close look at some of the very unusual species in Singapore. So bats are mammals and uh, they are warm-blooded creatures covered with fur and the females of bats, when they have babies, they will produce milk to feed their young. But uh, so they are not very dissimilar from us humans. Uh, but they are the only group of mammals that can fly, that can achieve true flight. And this with a very beautiful, well-designed pair of wings which is in their fingers. So they have five fingers just like us and all the fingers are very elongated and in between the fingers are very elastic membrane that stretches all the way to their ankles and this forms their very elastic wing. The Botanic Gardens is a fantastic place for different kinds of bats because there's a couple of old buildings, there's lots of different plants, so it uh, provides home and lots of food for different species, a wide variety of bats. So I'm, I'm always interested to uh, come here and observe the bats by myself or bring groups here to observe them so that uh, we can appreciate them better. So as the sun sets and we observe the fading lights, we are preparing ourselves to watch the emergence of the bats. So the fruit bats will be hungry and uh, tummies will be rumbling and they are looking for fruits to nibble on, whereas the insect eating bats are looking for some crunchy insects to munch and they will be using their echolocation to swoop around and try and zoom in and home in on some of these insects for their breakfast as they awaken from their roost. And we'll be getting ready our bat detector to try and see where they are coming from and where they are going to. And how fast or slow they are flying. And that will give us an idea of how many bats there may be in a certain area and how many insects that they could be feeding on in a given area. We know for a fact that bats uh, do carry uh, wide host of viruses, but we also know that 
uh, the bats themselves are naturally resistant to those viruses. The problem happens is when some or one of these viruses can jump a host and be passed on to an intermediate host or even directly to humans. And the chances of that happening are actually very, very, very small. So uh, we shouldn't be too concerned about this happening although we have bats living around us because uh, we rarely have direct contact with bats ourselves. Bats are super important because the nectar and fruit-eating bats, they will visit flowers when they're in bloom and through their, that process, they will help to pollinate the flowers which in turn helps those flowers to produce fruit for us. And these fruits include uh, patai, beans, durians, bananas, just to mention a few. So many, many tropical fruits are indeed pollinated by nectar bats. And then after the flowers are pollinated and the fruits are matured, the, the same set of bats, the fruit bats, will also come and consume many of these fruits. And as they consume the fruits, they will help to spread the seeds far and wide. That's what we call seed dispersal. And that is also doing another big favour for the plants in which they depend on. Moreover, we have the insect-eating bats which are helping to control the insect population. They can feed on flies and mosquitoes and moths which are generally considered pests by us people. Thankfully, bats still thrive in Singapore because there are actually uh, quite a lot of spaces for them, some man-made, many natural. At the moment, I'm really glad that we can still find a good and healthy diversity of bats in Singapore and I really hope it stays that way because the presence of bats shows us that their food sources are abundant and around. There's plentiful flowers and fruits for the nectar and fruit eaters to feed on. There's plentiful insects which tells us that the ecosystem is healthy. So bats in general are a very good bio-indicator for the whole health of the ecosystem. So there's lots we can do to help the bats thrive. We can maybe plant more trees that will produce flowers and fruits that are favourable for the nectar and fruit bats. We can design our buildings that may probably give allowance for a small family of bats to roost perhaps. So there's lots of ways in which we can actually encourage bats to continue to thrive in our tiny island of Singapore.